active flow and noise control is being put to unique and novel testing at the Advanced Aero Propulsion Laboratory at FSU. Here at the Short Takeoff and Vertical Landing, or Stovall facility, researchers are simulating the impinging jet flow field that occurs in these aircraft when in hover mode. Instead of the horizontal takeoff that require long runways, you now have to redirect the thrust from the engine to impinge that jet onto the ground. The impact of that is that it can produce these very large or very intense feedback of oscillations, okay, which can have significant impact on the aircraft itself. It can damage the aircraft as well as the large uh, sound pressure levels that are produced for people that are around the aircraft. So in order to control this, uh, you have to actually get at the root of the problem, which is that of the instabilities in the impinging jet itself. You've got to develop novel actuators that can handle uh, the environment that they're going to work in. You've got to monitor the sound pressure levels that are ultimately produced. And they've developed a heated jet, impinging jet facility here at FSU in order to develop this technology and take it through several generations so that ultimately it could be potentially introduced into a real short vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. AFNC is applied to the study of high-speed jet noise and techniques for reducing that noise. At the state-of-the-art high-temperature supersonic jet facility, commonly referred to as the hot jet facility, the exhaust produced by jet engines is simulated. The facility is capable of generating the high-temperature, high-pressure air flows that are needed for an accurate simulation. If you want to understand the noise that's generated from an aircraft engine, then you need to be able to do this in an environment like an anechoic chamber with a heated jet in order to evaluate some of these technologies and the actual impact, not only on the acoustics, but also on the performance of the jet in terms of the thrust that it produces. Microjets, a type of actuator, are placed at the engine's nozzle. Water, nitrogen, or air is injected into the exhaust flow. This results in a significant reduction of up to 7 decibels at the peak radiation direction. Actuators can also be deployed to increase the efficiency of an airfoil or wing surface in flight. FCAP researchers installed microjet arrays on a radio-controlled model aircraft to test microjet efficacy for flow control during flight. The goal was to delay stall and increase maximum lift of the RC aircraft using active flow control. These microair vehicles and unmanned air vehicles are excellent test beds. They're essentially miniature experiments, much like we have in wind tunnels, but they're actually flight experiments. So they allow us to test systems, albeit smaller scale systems than in the conventional aircraft, but still very valuable for that. There's a problem with airfoils. They, they generate lift and as we increase the angle of attack we get higher lift. But there's a point where we get to a critical angle of attack where there's lift produced but it's not enough to counterbalance the weight of the airplane and that's when stall occurs. And that happens with every airplane and these actuators that we've developed here at the lab have shown promise to delay stall in the wind tunnel. And so what I'm looking at doing is taking that system of actuators, microjets, and implementing them into an RC aircraft and actually flying it and testing them and evaluating them during actual flight. A tank of compressed air mounted on the RC provided the power for the actuators. We went and flew it and using a little video camera that we had mounted onto the airplane, we were able to see that the microjets did in fact delay separation, thus reducing the stall. And so when we have the airplane in a stalled position and I turn on the microjets, the airplane is no longer stalled at that same angle of attack. So the results are consistent with the results that I obtained from the wind tunnel. The ability to measure high frequency shear stress and surface pressure on aircraft wings is a vital safety issue. Accurate microphone array measurements in a wind tunnel can require an array of sensors in excess of 1,000 units. Up until now, the production of this many sensors was not economically feasible. For this application, FCAP is using microfabrication technology to produce cost-effective sensors by means of microelectromechanical systems, 
also known as MEMS. These are developed at the Interdisciplinary Microsystems Group at the University of Florida under the direction of Professor Mark Sheplak. And these are essentially silicon-based fabrication technology, microfabrication technology that is used to make the computer chips that we have inside of all of our PCs and, and apples and everything else that we use now. And that same sort of microfabrication technology is being now applied to make microscale sensors, meaning sensors that are in the order of microns or millimeters, submillimeter scale, that measure things like temperature and pressure and shear stress and sound, microphones, in order to implement in these control systems to see how well are we doing? What is the drag on the vehicle? What is uh, the, the local sound pressure level that you hear, that one would hear? Is it loud? Is it too loud? What's its frequency content? Okay, and we would use this information in the design of control systems. These are just a few examples of the facilities and research being performed at all four FCAP University partners.